So here we have a, a really interesting example and quite rare where we apparently have a fracture here, don't we, Andre? Mm -hmm. um, I can't see it. It's barely noticeable. So to show me on the screen what it looks like, because that looks just like a scratch, doesn't it? Let's have a look. Oh yeah, that must be a scratch because it's fairly smooth. And carbon scratches or carbon fractures are normally quite jagged. So that definitely must be a scratch. Is that right? Is that a scratch? Well, you know what? Yeah? If you flex it a little bit, you can see a gap appear. And there you go. Hi guys, uh, one of the things that people want to know from us is how can you tell if a carbon frame is broken? Uh, one of the things that people often have heard is that you can do a tap test with a coin. Is that true or is it not? Well, here's Rob with a bit more information about the science behind it. Thank you, Gertie. It's been something that I've wanted to talk about for some time. This uh, idea that uh, uh, tapping with a coin is going to give you any kind of indication of any fracturing or indeed that your bike is safe because it doesn't make a particular sound seems to me uh, something that I need to myth bust if I can. So hopefully this will help you. Basically, tap testing on bicycle frames does not work. Uh, and the reason is very simple. Tap testing was invented for uh, extrusions like wings or helicopter blades or propeller blades. Uh, basically composite materials, even other materials where the extrusion didn't change necessarily in thickness. So as you tap through it with a special hammer, it would give you an indication of the same sound across the board which would give you an indication that there was most things were okay. Now those tap tests were not done as definitive, they're done as precautionary anyway. But on bicycles it seems to have developed into this, uh, this process where people feel that tap testing is the way forward when it is not, it's absolutely not. And I'll explain to you why. Uh, if you look here at a blade of a helicopter, you will see this is a very, very long piece of material which won't change much in thickness except maybe the, the structural ribs that run through the blade, but in most cases will be very uh, consistent in its sound across the board. And if there is an inconsistency, generally that's a sign of, say, rivets who have come loose where they're not bonded to the surface, they get a kind of a hollow sound. Same as, uh, as a wing structure, you can see here very clearly that the materials are made of a laminate, uh, three-ply, four-ply laminate, and then screwed together or riveted, but they're not molded that way. The ribs are molded, probably, or bent or extruded, but what you tend to find is a consistency, again, throughout the length of this wing. Now, I'll show you on a set of forks what I mean about inconsistencies. So here we have uh, your typical set of road bike forks, uh, let's leave that out the way. Um, and we have a hammer. Now I'm going to give you an idea of just how many different variations of sounds go across this. Bearing in mind you can clearly see that there's a whole chunk of material missing from this. So let's start making some music. See, it's thick, thicker there, thinner there very dense there. Again, dense, but dense in a different way. Down to the steerer, the steerer end where the material is thicker. So, quite different. I think you'll agree. Now you can see on these forks, uh, what I mean by wall thickness changes. Here, this end here is a dropout, which is generally pre-molded. On some bikes they're different, but on this particular one, pre-molded and inserted into the mold where the bladders are inserted and, and uh, different varying layers of carbon are put together in order to make this fork as tuned as they, as they like to say, 
for its particular purpose. But you can see here thick sections of material, thin sections. Now, when you're doing a, a tap test on a frame that is made up of various different thicknesses, you're always going to get different sounds. Now, the point really is that what if there was a fracture in one of these areas? Well, we've shown you two examples where tap testing uh, just does not show anything. This would be the same. Now, you can see here I'm going to tap across this edge here and then onto this hollow, and there's going to be very little difference in sound. So. Not like or, or that. So, I mean, it's quite fairly alarming. So, as I said, uh, the idea of um, uh, using a tap test as a definitive way of understanding the status of your bike, um, the status of the structure, is completely irrelevant. I wouldn't do it. Please don't do it. It's dangerous. Here at Carbon Bike Repair, we have a philosophy that if we can't discover a fracture through thermographics, ultrasound, a microscope, then we'll consider it a fracture. Hopefully that'll help you today in uh, not being tempted to do any of this, or indeed let your bike shop know if you see them haul a coin out. Just, uh, just ignore that, that advice. So hopefully that helped you. And uh, if you do like what we're producing, Please subscribe to the channel, it always helps us uh, grow the channel, develop the channel, give you more helpful tips and tricks on the dark art of carbon. And uh, press that notification button and you'll be notified when a new video comes through. So in the meantime, thank you very much for watching, we do appreciate your, your participation in our videos and uh, we'll see you next time.